Hello, everyone, and welcome to Board Game Co. Today, and I'm a duck. <laughs> That's not how this goes. I, you tried to co- I was Listen, ready to take that line yeah, from well, you, okay. and you co-opted and jumped I in before I could I stole it immediately? Yeah. This is on your channel, though, Immaterial. Right? Uh-huh. Immaterial. Go over to Quackalope and subscribe. Also, support my Patreon, and is that what I'm supposed to do That's here? what you're supposed to do. Okay, perfect. That's feel, what you're supposed to do. I, th- I made myself uncomfortable. <laughs> That's interesting. Do you, want, do you want to cut? We can cut and start again. No, yes, no, maybe. Today we're doing it. <laughs> start again. Oh, actually? I don't know. What do you want? I was th- I, that was that was an audience cut. That wasn't a real one. Tone of voice, by the way. If I say it, if I say it loudly and boisterously, I'm performing. Are you? If I pause and be like, oh, we're going to cut this, right? Then I'm not performing. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, but for the future. I don't know. Okay. Ready? I you suppose. can go ahead and start. It. You want to jump in again? or? I mean, I, no. No? No. Okay, fine. I don't now. Cool. Well, you yeah. don't have to. I don't, I don't want to now. No. Well, listen, someone, you start. someone has to start. No, sir, point. please. No, at a certain we, no, 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 please, please, go ahead. That's my, that's my audio. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to keep that in. We're going to just start with that. That was my computer dinging. So, hello, hello, that's my computer. Right behind me, by the way. That's the no, three no, no, giant please, screens. Please, begin. No, no, fine, you begin. No, 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 go ahead. No, fine. This is going to be... Or- Hello, hello, and welcome to Board Game Co. I'm a duck, and you are... Oh, please, continue. Mm, uh-huh, uh-huh, this is crazy. This is going to be... Gone past the box, I'll just take this over, because considering your words are... Hi. This is going to be our <sighs> review of Oros. Excuse the madness that reigns in this basement. It is what it is, it's part of the show. But Oros by ASC Games and Brant Pinkerhoff is a game that is coming to Kickstarter that you should 100% be paying attention to. I'm cutting straight to the chase on this one. This is a review. We will also have a gameplay up on your channel with somewhere around this time. Uh, In close proximity to the launch of the Kickstarter and this video going live. If it's not there already, just make sure you subscribe to me because I desperately need the support. Mm, Yeah, speaking of support, make sure to head on over to his Patreon (laughs) where you can go ahead and jump on in and get, what is it, exclusive content and Uh, and Kingdom Death Monster videos. No, mostly I'm just allowing people to force me to drink different types of liquid. You can force them to drink different types of liquid, that all those things are relevant. None of those things have to do with Oros, except for the fact that Oros takes place in a vast array of liquid, otherwise known as the (laughs) ocean. That was a stretch, but I'm okay with it. Oros, let's give an overview of this game. Uh, Oros, at its core, is effectively going to be a game where you are mashing together land masses in order to create mountains upon which you will build your shrines. Sir, sir, sir. I got this part. You you do the, the, like, mechanic stuff. Oros is going to be a game where you're playing one of various worshippers of the deity that created this uh, planet, this little orbiting ball, this globe in front of you. You're going to be rising mountains up from the ocean depths, maneuvering islands, shifting land tiles, and doing your very best to erect shrines and place workers down on the board. The idea of this is to gain in favor, in divinity, in wisdom, and finally, by the end of the game, rise to the top of this ziggurat and, well, win. Win. Yes. yes. To be clear, rising to the top of the ziggurat is not winning, although it, it will be... It triggers and condition and indicates you're doing pretty darn well. Likely, because yeah. you are getting points based on how you do on the ziggurat, as well as you're getting points based on a variety of things on your personal player boards. Player boards that you will be expanding upon, developing your abilities and your scoring mechanisms yep. as you go. You see, every time you build a shrine on one of those mountains you've created, you effectively are ascending in wisdom. Wisdom is going to be used to push up your abilities, making you stronger and more powerful in the way you collide things together, in the way you shift land masses all around this board crossing edges in the way you can move people around the board in the way you can spread volcanoes all those things and also in the way you score points because you will score different points as you go higher and higher in the tracks in addition to getting multipliers based on the various monolith shrines and temples you have built in this in this world now, that you are playing the core mechanic structure of this is going to be a worker placement or kind of action selection style game with your own personal player board combined with that shifting and maneuvering. Your yeah. board here is going to be what's controlling the land mass in the center. And there is a bit of direct player interaction. There's certainly a bit of I'm doing something that either helps or hurts the players. And the types of manipulation you're talking about give you a variety of paths to move up that allow you to control this main board in a lot of different ways, either by erecting new land, shifting them farther, maneuvering your workers in, in different ways, yeah. uh, or bringing up and kind of exploding volcanoes. Exploding volcanoes is a fascinating concept, but I do like it. I do like it. And also, also the game has great flavor text. Flavor text is an amazing mechanic that I love in games. I'm just going to read a small snippet of it. Hear now what wisdom is. Those who follow, call your own. A sign and they will obey. Four mountains and they will build. Send and they will study. These few will I make as I, full of luster, full of glory. Go down and ascend. Oh, beautiful. It is. It is. I. Wait, I don't even there, like flavor there text. More? There's more, but but you have to say something. I mean, there's no reason to watch your gameplay. I, I respect if that. They don't, yeah, 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 that's yeah. true. There's no reason to watch. Not your gameplay none whatsoever. Unless there's more flavor. They're text. only there for the flavor text. Let's be clear about that. Wrong. 
And so with that, with that general overview, anything else we need to cover? Uh, let's cover the one more aspect. There's going to be an Autonoma player. So you can play this game solo with multiple Autonomas, or you can play this game two players with an Autonoma. In fact, yep. it's required. It's a three-player minimum game, so two players must play with mm -hmm. a Autonoma player. Or, of course, you can play it at three or four player cards. And there's two sides to this board, a larger and a smaller map. And I think that will I, cover... Uh, I think the last thing that's worth going over is just how oh, this action yes. selection works. So that's go fair. ahead and break down exactly... Because because it's, it's, I think, one of the coolest parts of the game for me. So this is a almost a hybrid of the... You know the concept of worker placement? I mean, worker placement, you place your workers out, you take actions. That's hybrid what worker that, placement is? To an extent. But also, there's another mechanic that is commonly used of taking an action, and then you take a different action that is different than the last action. Yeah. Shifting around. Yeah. This is almost a hybrid of the two. It feels like a sliding puzzle yes. to me. Similar to what the game map feels like the worker placement rows here are going to be filled and unfilled as yep. you're shifting workers and you have to sequence them in a way that allows you to open up a spot for another yep. worker to move and because you basically you put down a worker and then you have to put down another worker and another worker but then as you're moving them around you can't use a spot that's occupied you have to shift that worker to somewhere else and then shift another worker to somewhere else it's a little bit of you're, a you're sort of planning anywhere from three to six worker placements ahead yes. preparing for the next round to, but also to be leaving more things accurate, open for your own. You're often not planning three to six moves ahead and, and then looking paying the down price. At the board going, I really need to I really get should have started playing Family Theory. Why didn't I think a little bit farther ahead? Yeah, yeah. It, is a, it is a fascinating puzzle. And so, with all that, yep. let's head into the, the review part of this video. Okay. Starting off with the usual section, what do you like about this game? Uh, there's two main things that I like about this game. The very first is going to be that worker worker action that I was talking about. Sure. The idea of shifting and sliding. For some reason, it is light enough that it never feels it never overwhelms me. Sure. But it's an interesting enough puzzle that I always feel rewarded and engaged when I'm manu maneuvering workers down at the bottom of the board. The other thing is going to be just the nature of this little floating globe. Like I, I can imagine this it's little amazing. spinning world and tiles and islands shifting and volcanoes. It, it feels very thematic to me. Yeah. Uh, and all of that kind of contained within this little puzzle box. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm very positive on this game. I, I would agree. So for myself, I mean, there's, there's going to be dozens of things, a small small little things I'll just jump into, different aspects. Uh, first of all, like you said already, the terraforming aspect of this universe is amazingly mm -hmm. well done. We've seen games that have forms of terraforming in different ways, Terra Mystica, Terraforming Mars, yep. different aspects. This one has one of the most, it genuinely Terracotta. feels, is that a, a cheese? Or is that a I'm game? I'm not sure. I it's think a it's, game? Well, I don't know. There's another game called Terramaru. Yep, that yeah, one that's well. not the one at all. Terracotta. Go out and buy terracotta from your local game store and or grocery store. <laughs> uh, but anyways, you're going to be forming mountains in, in a way that, in land masses, in a way that I don't think any game has ever made me as viscerally, viscer, viscerally, 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 viscerally aware of. That's a good word, if I can say it properly. Viscerally aware of, in terms of how how you're actually genuinely clashing together land masses. You may take an action and go, you know, hey, boom, we're going to slide these two over here. That's going to turn and that's going to keep that a four. That volcano is going to pop up into a three. You are genuinely forming land masses and volcanoes. And then using those to spread the volcanoes <clears throat> over the ocean and generating new land masses. Maybe I'm going to spread this volcano down over here, generating a three over there, which is excellent because that's going to let me move around, also smash more land masses together to build temples, to erect shrines. There's going to be a, a degree of terraforming that is, is so evident, more so than any other game I've played. The general tableau building of this game. The fact that you start the game with different abilities, how many spaces you can move when you shift tiles, how many spaces you can move when you collide tiles, when you spread volcanoes, and every single one of those has a pathway forward. Mm -hmm. Every single one of those is upgradable to the point where you get these... First, you get these uh, larger versions of the ability. Mm -hmm. Instead of moving one, you can move two. But then you unlock even more fun aspects, like now I can move mountains when previously you couldn't have moved can mountains. Can journey across water and Journey edges. across water, yeah. There's game-breaking abilities. I love tableau building. They and, and each one leads to a potential sequence of victory points, and yep. each one also leads to realistic ways to manipulate the board in your advantage. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then, like you mentioned already, the work of placement, the puzzle there, yep. absolutely adore that. Uh, what else is there? The scoring. This is a game that you do have to take into account that scoring multipliers. You might want to A little bit of point salad -esque. Yeah. You're pushing up yeah. certain things. You're banking on being able to score a lot of points on one yeah. item. But it's, one of those, it's one of those times you have to choose. At a certain point in the game, you have to choose between yep. your tableau and your points. And if you make that decision too late, you might lose the game. So you have to balance that tightly. I also like... So we're on the two-player side of the board here, yes. or the small map side of the board, yep. not two-player necessarily. There's a larger version of the board on the other side of this, and everything wraps around, yes. which is done very cleanly. Uh, this shifts to here, shifts shifts down to there. Everything's manipulatable on this circumference. Yes. And I don't... For some reason, it should be more confusing than it is. It's not that confusing. No. 
It's straight lines and little arrows pointing things. It, it really does work in terms of, oh, by the way, we got an empty spot over there. We're going to spring up a little volcano. Those areas are constantly generating land, pumping new land masses into the game yep. as they clear up. But yeah, the board space is very well done in that aspect, in that movement wrapping around and just giving you a, a world building feel yep. to a 2D, to a two dimensional space. Anything else as far as things we like, don't like, the worker placement, juggling, puzzle, Is it I appreciate. things we like, don't like? Well, like first, like first. Okay. You're right, yeah, my bad. But the uh, the, the worker placement puzzle, I enjoy that. The aspect of, of constantly, you have three actions around, and you are constantly trying to juggle when to build, when to move, how to build. Uh, you also get additional benefits if you currently have a follower on one of your on one of your sacred sites. If you have a follower there, when someone else builds above it, you also get a mm -hmm. bit of a bonus as well. So you're juggling that and trying to, to keep your followers in place versus pulling them back to utilize them in other areas. Lots of different aspects of this, this puzzle of how to ultimately end up with the most victory points. Mm -hmm. Anything else before we move on? I don't think so. I don't think so. Cool. Which brings us to the section of what you don't like. Yeah. Uh, so, what don't I like? It's a hard... It's a hard... I have things, but I, I, I agree with you I had to push on this one. Because what don't I'll get I to like? this more in okay. my final thoughts, but for me, there's going to be less things that I don't like and more not critiques, but aspects of what I want to see more in yeah, this. Yeah, there's, there's areas that I'd like to see things shift. Like, like you were mentioning the terraforming. The terraforming is great right now. Yes. I would also love to see more terraforming. Right now, yeah. it's just land tiles that scale and volcanoes. Uh, I personally would love to see ecosystems, forests, this manipulation system. But I'd love more. to see it open up. But expansions, more. expansions, who knows? The, the things that I, I probably am the least sweet on at the moment uh, yeah. is going to be lower player counts, specifically I, with the AI. I was going to go I think that's there. one that we're yep. both going to talk about. I've had mixed experiences with them. I've had some that aren't too bad, but I think I would play... When you say when you say some that aren't too bad, you mean within this game or in general? Within within this game. Okay. Within this game. So I'm not a big fan of AI systems, yeah. Automata, anyway, for lower player counts, personally. Uh, this one functions. Yes. It is functional. But because this game involves so much head-to-head, -head, players getting in each other's way, the flip of the card that then resolves something that is messing up your plan instead of specifically you doing it yep. feels a bit off. It feels yes, a bit it different from right the experience that I like. And yep. so three, four players, when you're sitting down with this one, engaging in a way where you're all directly interacting, uh, that's going to be that's gonna be a sequence. The other thing, and then mm -hmm. I'll let you sure. jump into yours, is going to be something that Jan doesn't like about this game. There is the opportunity to be mean. Um, oh, now, sorry. What was I apologize. I apologize. Yeah. I forgot. I want to add one more thing to the what I like section. There is the opportunity to be mean. <laughs> so, so, yes, each yes. to their own, and it's not something yeah. I don't necessarily like. But you know, and things are still being tweaked. Uh, let's just say, I in one game destroyed Jan so hard. There's mean and there's problematic mean. You broke the game. I you straight up broke the I, game. I destroyed Jan so hard with a older mechanic that the game changed. Yes. But even now, without the direct be cruel to each other mechanic in it, there's there's no direct take that, but there is still shifting tiles, moving people away. Thwarting their plans. Thwarting Which what they're trying like. to do. Leaving them I, yeah. alone on a little island and then going, you're going to go a little bit farther yeah. away. You had a mechanic that literally made people feel like they couldn't do anything, and yeah. that I don't like as much. And that's why they, they changed it. They adjusted it based on yep. you abusing that mechanic. Uh, in my case, the thing I tend to like, but I can totally understand why others would not and would throw into my what I can see others not liking section is being mean in a way that isn't complete thwarting in a way of I set up my moves and then you with a little snap shove a whole bunch of tiles around the board and I'm like I thought I prepped for that I thought I could handle it's that fun. I can't. it's not for everyone 100% yeah absolutely uh, for myself I, I really have I think just that AI aspect I don't know if I have any real other complaints of the game at lower mm. player counts I did not love the autonomous play forget that I would not play this at two players again let's just be directly frank but it might be interesting at one well, I, I, I was about to say that so <laughs> that's so interesting so basically so two things first of all understand my bias my bias is I do not generally like autonomous players in general mm. uh, and to the point that even with one I don't know if I would play it but it's I am remarkable more he allows me interested. to be here yeah, it's, it's unnecessary. I could just do this without you. But uh, yeah, for me, this game thrives at three and four players. Mm -hmm. At two players, the Autonoma, again, I don't like Autonomous to begin with, plus the additional strike, like you said, of when you get in my way, I feel like it's tactically planned. When the when game the gets in my gets way. way, it feels random. Yeah. It feels like, oh, congratulations, you move something without even knowing what's stopping. And if it hits you three times, yeah. and 
knock the other player. Yeah, it's just it doesn't feel as fun. It doesn't feel as you know. That said, to the autonomous credit, before we get into why solo would be better, to get into the to the autonomous credit, it is incredibly easy to run. You flip a card, oh, you yeah. just go through one, two, three steps, it takes a second. It is fast. My problem with it is not the speed or the complexity of it. My problem with it is is just the, the way it's the experience functions. of the game at three or yeah. four players is reduced significantly yeah. when you don't have those players in. Yeah. Now, to the autonomous credit, uh, first of all, like I said already, like we both seem to feel is solo might be better because that randomness isn't hitting one player versus another. You're it's, playing against the puzzle. You're playing against the puzzle. And so the autonomous scale based off of the different yes. color of the boards. And so there's ways that you can engage Which in the puzzle. Which I was going to get into. There's four different autonomous in, in this game. In a different way. And yeah. so in the prototype Four different behaviors. Oh, who knows what else? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. But four different behavior systems. We're going to have four different ways in terms of how aggressive they are, how hard they are. So if you want different options, don't think of this as one autonoma. There are four different systems using this. Sorry, four different autonomous using the same system. The the only other thing that I would note, which isn't really a, a game criticism, sure. it is more a something I want to see in the in the finished copy. Yep. Uh, there are a few minute rules that I, for some reason, after playing this three, four times, always still seem to forget. So, Moving someone down from a shrine and needing to step on the other shrines to, yep. to be able to progress or get out of that zone. Scoring the victory points when you're building up a stack. I, I would really like to have just a little quick player reference aid. player aid. We have our cards, and these are helpful. So I was thinking this last night as well. I was thinking through the aspect of, I, we play this game multiple times, yep. and there's always that small little thing of, well, can I move these into that? Can I move mountains? When I get the upgrade to ability yes. to shift mountains, can I still move mountains? Can I not? A little sheet, double-sided, just a few basic rules of when you do this, this works. And when you commonly, do this, commonly that missed works. something like that. Yeah, commonly missed section. Which That'd be great. would not and is not expected in a prototype. So I'll be clear about that. It's yeah. not a criticism of what's here. It is something that I would really like to see in the finished game, though, because I think it'll make I think it'll make accessibility. I think if that you much don't higher. have that in this game, people will still enjoy it, but I think they'll be enjoying it and playing it wrong at times. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I think that's fair. Which means we move on now to what others, what we can see others not liking. The aspects of this game might not be right for you, but isn't a problem for us at all. So the take that ish, it's not really take that, but the ability to interact with other players on the board is something we've already mentioned. Yeah. We'll throw that one up there as, a, as a, a free kind of softball. Outside of that, I would say the nature of how this game scores points mm -hmm. is going to be something that is a hit or miss for certain people. Okay. You have to kind of understand the puzzle that you're playing. You have to be able to progress up one or multiple of the attracts. You, you need to know when you shift to trying to score from what you've already built. Going to that choice aspect, you may be having the best game ever in what it looks like you're doing, but if yeah. you don't take into account the scoring, you might have the best game ever and score the least points. Yeah, it, it's it's definitely not a negative for me, but I could see that style of yeah. scoring being something that, that some players don't enjoy as much. Yeah, for me, there's really going to be two things in this area. The first is going to be the, the aspect of this game is very... AP prone, analysis paralysis prone. If you are someone who's playing with the Thinking group, six turns ahead. Yeah, you have to think six turns ahead, and then you're also trying to figure out, well, if I can move this here, then I can clash that, sure. and you may sometimes undo or redo your turns based on your three actions not lining up. You're like, okay, I'm going to move this, and then you try your second action, you're like, oh, that doesn't work. Nope. Oh, wait, no, I can't move across the water. For some edge. reason, shift is still covered. Yeah. I really need to return my followers. So if you are playing with people who constantly think and rethink their turns, this might be a game that's not the best for them. Mm -hmm. Take into account your own group, your own dynamics, but if it, that's slowdown might be there because this is a very thinky puzzle. Uh, and then the second thing is that the game is to a certain extent an abstract game. It's not an abstract game to be clear, but mm. it has that feel. It has a feel of you're moving things around. It feels very dry in what you're doing. You're upgrading your ability to move things, to clash things. Mm -hmm. There's no giant swaths of powers and abilities that sweep across the board. They are there. They're in the game, but it is very dry in the experience it's delivering. You have to appreciate and like the tactical nature of mashing things around, colliding land masses, moving around a bit. It is it's it's I think it's a dry game. I like it. I like yeah, it. Yeah, I mean I, I would I would probably feel pretty comfortable giving this a action selection abstract title. Yeah. With the exception that the theme, building, the theme is done so well yeah. that to me no part of it feels abstracted. Even though that's the I mean you boil this down to black and white. Yeah. And that's the nature of what you have. Little numbers smashing into each other. Yeah. And which brings us to final thoughts and rating. So, uh, final thoughts for me, like I said already. Well, let's start with this. Yep. What, is, what do you rate this on a bourbon scale? Uh, oh, okay. So, I'm not going to get a chance to introduce my own. You're just no, accepting I'm, the fact if, that it exists. If so, you're going to introduce if, chaos into the videos, I'm going to embrace it. If you're not familiar, uh, I rate all my stuff on a 1 through 5 bourbon scale. Yep. I, you know, i, I got to be honest. Prototype, so grain of salt. Um, and so, I'm going to do, do two sequences. I'm going to rate this a 4 out of 5 on a bourbon scale. Mm. With, what does that even mean? I, I, no, I don't no, know no. the way We're getting there. With the opportunity for this to go either 
No, the opportunity for this to go to a five to five, a five out of five is win, that a good thing? We'll get there. Win the actual game comes in with the expansion. Okay. So one on the bourbon scale. Uh, if I'm sitting down to play this, I'm having one bourbon. I can probably play this with like a close group of friends and stuff like that. But let's yeah. be honest, we're not stopping at one. If we're playing this game, it's going to be about an hour, hour and a half long. I'm going to make it to two to three bourbons easily. I'm going to be enjoying the game the entire time. That's a no-brainer. At three bourbons, I've started not focusing on the board quite as much, but the smashing tiles is just so much darn fun. I'm kind still fun. invested, and I'm far enough along in the game that I understand the puzzle of it, and I've already set up my endgame scoring, right? Sure. Four bourbons in, which is where I'm going to settle with this. We're getting right to that peak point of, I probably shouldn't play it again, probably shouldn't play it a second time in the same night, but I've just had probably one of the one of the better gaming experience I've had. Like like nights wrapping up, we're gonna play cockroach poker after this. Musical. Four out of five, incredibly solid, and I enjoyed all four bourbons. So the so reason why I'm giving it with the reason why I'm giving it the opportunity for a five out of five. Which means what? Is because we got there. Is because my concept is with the expansions, we're gonna increase the length of this game just a little bit. I'm hoping for expansions that add a little bit more kind of world building, a little bit more tableau, maybe some cool character sure. powers, some god abilities, like a sweeping hurricane brushing across the landscape. And if you're gonna introduce things that give you more godlike powers and abilities, you're gonna need another bourbon just to have and fully enjoy that experience. There's nothing like flicking a meeple halfway across the table and laughing at your friend unless you can sip a mm. old fashioned while you make eye contact. That's with the dexterity so, expansion, which doesn't for exist. me. For me, this is right now going to be a solid 4 out of 5 because of its prototype status with the opportunity to be a, a hands-out, knock-out-of-the-park yeah, 5 out of 5. Using bourbons. completely different scales, I also have this as a 4 out of 5 right now with yep. potential for a 5 out of 5. because yeah. bourbons as well? Or no, not bourbons. We're doing warm glasses of milk? Standard numbers. Just, just numbers of how much you appreciate. Not warm now, glasses of milk? 4 to 5 for me is going to be a game that is basically a great game, almost added to my collection, and I have my rating scale down below for those who want to read it. And 5 out of 5 is going to be like just an amazing experience, one of the best games I have in my collection. I have like maybe 50 games rated a 5 out of 5 from all the games I've played in the past 10 years basically. Mm. So from that, in terms of why that's at this point, I really enjoy this puzzle. This yeah. puzzle is thinky. This puzzle is excellent. It is unique in what it's doing. It is visually delightful. I don't think we touched upon that in the What It We Like section. The game is visually delightful. It has a beautiful aesthetic to the game. Oh, yeah. Very unique. Very just amazing. And watching things build up, collide together, love it. Uh, the puzzle, the uh, the tableau building, the choices you make of you always want to move everything up, but you have to choose which strategic advantage to take yep. in the game. Love all that. The reason it does not currently hit a 5, but has potential to hit that, is I am one of those people who does feel the experience is a bit drier than what I'm looking for. Not dry, to be very clear, mm. but a bit drier. It is very Euroized. It, even though there are powers and abilities to an extent, even though, it, though there is tableau building, the actual experience feels like the more I play it, it's going to feel to a certain extent like I'm playing the same game, just choosing different pathways of how I want to up sure. my powers and abilities. I don't know what it takes to move it to a 5 out of 5. I really, really Sounds like Sounds like you've got it open for expansions to do that. It though. depends what the expansions yeah. are. Or just, what they do. or just what they're doing in Kickstarter. 100%. Like they're introducing yeah. elements that just... I it. just want something that makes the game a drop more exciting. It is an incredible zero experience. Yeah. It is beautiful. It is fun. It is fairly easy to teach. A little bit to wrap your head around initially, but once you get past the basics, fairly easy to jump into. Incredibly solid experience that I have zero problem recommending. You should check this one out on Kickstarter. Absolutely. Uh, just that final push to a five is where I want to see where this game goes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's been a Board Game Co. video. It has indeed. So glad to have you here. Now, just for the record, swing down below into the description of this video. You have a link to your Patreon. I do. Uh, over there, you're going to be able to find a series of videos that break down, destroy, and tell you exactly why you should never back Kickstarter games. Inclu period. Including this one when it shows up. Are you going to do this one oh, as well? I, well, I don't do customized. I don't do videos <laughs> for each one. I just go through the active roster okay. of the week's Kickstarters so, and just tell you all the reasons you shouldn't back those Kickstarters. Yeah, so if you want to go, if you want to go get a completely biased unfair don't, don't listen to that guy by the way this game's excellent you should get it a completely biased unfair version of alex ripping apart kickstarters yeah uh, it's gonna be over on yeah your patreon that that's gonna be it uh thanks thanks for the uh the, the push but all that said this has been a board game we just said that already i'm just losing my focus here whatever the case whatever you do this is my video remember to do the important thing and have a good one